This video is going to go over free response question number two in our re review handout for units eight and nine. And here's the bit.ly link, bit.ly slash apstatc12 review, or REV, if you want to follow along on the handout provided. Here's the question. A month before the election between incumbent Representative Jones and his challenger, former Governor Smith, the representative's polling organization wants to know where he should concentrate his campaigning. They take simple random samples of potential voters in the southern and northern portions of the state and ask them if they have decided who to vote for and who are still undecided. The results are in the table below. And this table is nice. It gives totals. Thank God. Um, letter A says, do these data provide convincing evidence that there is a difference in the distribution of voters who have decided or are still undecided in the two regions? Use a chi-squared test to support your decision. Part B is going to ask, the pollsters are concerned that while all 200 people in the South sample responded, 24 people out of the original SRS of 200 in the North sample did not respond. Is it possible that the opinions of these people would change the pollsters' conclusions? Explain. Well, let's address the first part first. Do these data provide convincing evidence that there is a difference in the distribution of voters who have decided or are still undecided? Use a chi-square test to support your conclusion. So this question is nice in that it does ask you to use a chi-square test so we don't have to guess, but which one is it? Well, look at the number of samples, okay? Uh, they take simple random samples, multiple samples. So since that's two samples, we're talking about northern region and southern region, southern region, we have to do a difference of the distribution. And that test is called the chi-square test of homogeneity. So your, your null and alternative hypothesis has to do with the comparison of the two distributions and are they the same or are they different? So set up your null and alternative hypothesis. Pause the video and you can try it, then unpause it and I'll have gone over them. Here we go. The null is there is no difference in the distribution of voters between the Southern and Northern regions, while the alternative is there is a difference in the distribution of voters between these two regions. And we're gonna use our standard alpha is 0.05. Hopefully that matches what you have. Let's check your conditions. Uh, we wanna make sure we're meeting our random um, 10% condition and expected counts in this case. Um, it does tell us here that there are simple random samples of potential voters in the southern and northern portions of the state. So we do have two simple random samples. Both samples we can assume that are gonna be less than 10% of their populations. We do have to show our expected counts. And with the matrices, I like to put them right in the table. And um, remember you can do your row total times your row total, column total divided by your overall. So if you do row total times column total divided by your overall total, that'll get you each individual one. But um, let's use our matrices. So when you're going to enter these in your matrix, you're going to go to second, x to the negative one power, go to edit. This is going to be a two by two matrix. Don't use your totals. And just put the raw numbers in, 115, 61, 149, and 51. And we're going to run the tests. Now, in your calculator, if you if you click on stat tests, it's chi-squared test. It's not uh, going to be di uh, diagrammed like as homogeneity or independence or association or going to fit. It's just the chi-squared test. And it'll use your observed values. It'll put your expected values in matrix B. So take a moment to write those numbers down because you're going to use them anyway. So you're going to take a minute to jot those values down since we'll use them in our do part. But you want to make sure that you go back into your matrix menu and you find your expected values and you write them on the table or jot them down in the place where you're doing your conditions. So you're going to hit uh, second x to the negative 1 and go down to B. You see how it put a matrix in option B. Don't go to edit. Just stick in names. Click on B and click enter. Pause that screen. Write those numbers down. And then you have met that condition. And you can see they're all at least five. So now I have all my expected counts written down. We're ready to get this stuff done. So go on and make sure that you do your do part. That ought to do it there. We already had those values. So it's just a matter of writing a couple steps on there and throwing a little dot, dot, dot at the end to make sure that you know that to continue forward, to continue forward with the rest of the calculations. Let's make our conclusion. 
Well, our typical conclusion is just linking your p-value to your alpha. As you can see, it's just slightly too big, so we're going to fail to reject the null, meaning we don't have convincing evidence that these distributions are different. That'll be the end of this video. Next video is going to go over FRQ number three.